Scott Lynn for Paul Lindman on the early morning update. Nice to have you along this Friday morning. We all use the Internet, but have you ever wondered how it actually works? My next guest is Andrew Blum, who writes for Wired Magazine, so I guess it was natural for him to want to see the inner workings of the so-called information superhighway. He takes us inside the Internet in his new book, Tubes, A Journey to the Center of the Internet. Andrew, welcome to KEX. What made you decide to tackle this project? Uh, it's interesting. I was I was writing a lot about architecture, about buildings, but somehow I, that meant I was spending all day in front of my laptop, and then I was getting up at the end of the day and looking at this cell phone screen in my pocket. Uh, and then something strange happened. Um, my internet home broke, and the guy came to fix it, and he sort of followed the wire from the behind the couch out to behind my out behind my building, and there was a squirrel running running across it, and he said, "I think a squirrel is chewing on your internet." And I figured if a squirrel could chew on that piece of the Internet, there must be other pieces squirrels could chew on. There must be something out there. So I started to think about following the wire, kind of yanking it from the wall to see where it would go. And where did it go? The Internet's a network of networks, right? And so they have to connect to each other somewhere. And it turns out that there are only about a dozen buildings in the world that are by far the most important places where the networks connect to each other. There's a kind of second tier of places. Actually, Portland has a very important one, the Piddock Building downtown. Has a, that's one that's filled with networks connecting to each other. So that's one piece of it. And the other piece of it is where data is stored, these massive data centers, of which Oregon has quite a few. Uh, you point out that that cloud that we've heard so much about isn't a cloud at all. <laughs> it definitely not. It's a, it's a big machine. It's a lot of big machines. And <laughs> it's specific machines. You know, we can't think of it just as, you know, oh, it's out there. It's just a big thing. It's in real places. It's in, it's in you know, it's, it, 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 it's, not, it's not just anywhere. And that those, those places have their own histories. One of these places that you got to tour was the new Facebook campus in Prineville. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, Facebook has taken the tact that their their data center, rather than being hidden without a sign that nobody ever talks about it, they've decided that this is going to be a showpiece. So the the building in Prineville, uh, the first, there there's another one under construction and a third planned. Uh, it's three hundred thousand square feet, so you know the size of several WalMarts. But of course, Walmart is. is definition of big you know and, and it kind of jumps up out of the landscape um, out of the you know on the top of a butte above, above, Prime, above Prineville and it's filled with thousands and thousands and thousands tens of thousands of terabyte hard drives of servers and when you walk through the aisles like walking through the stacks of a library and and each hard drive has a blue light and that's essentially where you know these things that we sometimes annoy us but often are have a lot of uh, a lot of emotional resonance come from on Facebook while Facebook was pretty open for you, uh, uh, or open to you, I should say, Google wouldn't really let you see much of their inner workings. No, no. Google also has a they're, they're, they built their f- first ground up data center in Oregon as well, in the Dells. And uh, they're beginning to crack open the door a bit more. Uh, but I, I was essentially invited over for a tour of the parking lot uh, and then served an elaborate lunch. And when I said, oh, I'm disappointed not to get to look inside, uh, I was told that governors and senators have been disappointed too. And you might say that Google has a right to that, to you know, keep their corporate secrets for competitive reasons. But I visited dozens and dozens and dozens of these buildings. Google was by far the outlier. Google's attitude was that while we trust Google with our, our, our most precious information, our, our web searches, our emails, all these things, Google doesn't trust us to understand how these places work. And that was very different from all the other places that I visited. Are most of these data centers in remote locations? Are some even in secret locations? Well, they're only so, you know, well, that, there's an irony in that because uh, there's, they might pretend they're secret, but often if you enter the name of the company in the town into Google Maps, a big red flag lands right in the middle of the building. Although I should say until recently, Google scrubbed their own satellite image of their data center in the Dow, <laughs> so they, they kept that secret themselves. Uh, so, but the places where networks meet can't be secret because there's a publicness to it. If you're a network on the Internet, you, you're nothing unless you connect to another network on the Internet. And so you have to know where those connection points happen. You have to kind of you have to announce their, your presence in those places. Are these buildings properly protected? Uh, they are. They are. They are properly protected for the most part. Uh, you know, they have. Um, they. You know, they. They have a sort of far, sort of far heavier version of the security at a, at least the kind of secure office buildings we have in, in in New York. You know, with with guards in front and your 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 buzz through a door and a locked door and things like that. And they're also protected just by their by their scale. These are often quite big buildings, and you know, they, there's there's. There, there's a, the mesh of networks itself provides a lot of a lot of safety, a lot of redundancy. So it's unlikely anything would happen to a, a building as a whole. And because it's all about many networks connecting to many other networks, that helps a lot to keep things going. Andrew Blum, author of Tubes: A Journey to the Center of the Internet. Andrew, thanks for speaking with us this morning. Thanks.
Thanks for having me.